Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. In today's episode, I'll teach you how to do rate limiting in your Next.js applications or React or anything you want for that matter. This mini ad distracting you. Let me get rid of him. There we go. You don't want two ads blabbering at you. <laughs> so what is rate limiting? How is it helpful? What does it do? Well, imagine you allow your users on your website to make posts or to create reviews. All right. So you're working with get requests, post requests. Well, if you don't have any safeguards implemented, that user can make as many posts as you want. So he could spam you, spam your ass and do 50 posts and then you are inquiring all that cost because you're running that serverless function and that's just a funny way to go poor. So I'll show you how to set up everything from scratch. We're going to be using Drizzle with Neon Database and server actions as well. So that's going to be super cool. So let's get going. It's going to be brilliant just like today's sponsor. So the first step is to set up Drizzle. So let's head over to Drizzle. There we go to their website. Here we go. And we need to install two packages here. So let's head over to Postgres. And actually the uh, Neon DB setup is super, super simple. <laughs> if you can find it, that's that's the problem though. Postgres, yeah, there we go. So these two commands, npm, i, drizzle, orm, and then the Neon database as well with the kit, okay? And then here, the, the setup is super simple. You import this, I just created a server folder here in my root folder and I created an index.ts. Okay, so as you can see, it's the same code. The only difference is here uh, is I'm passing in the schema and the schema here again is just another file in my TS and all it has is literally just a simple table. So let me just clean this up here. This is the only setup I have. So <laughs> just just the basic uh, DB. All right, so just the product table here that has an ID of serial with a primary key just the text for the post and a timestamp. All right, that's it. Now, why do we import this um, schema here? If you don't have the schema and you just pass it in the SQL like they do, I'm not sure why they have the doc set up like this, because if you only pass in as uh, the actual like connection string, right, to connect to your database, uh, it's not gonna know what your schema is. So when you're trying to do like db.query. Oh, look at that, drizzle type error. So what we'll do is we import all of our schemas and then just pass that down here, all right, as an object. And now if you do db dot insert, sorry, query, for example, dot, there we go, we can actually get the products, okay? So <laughs> it is what it is. Next up, what we need is to pass in this drizzle database URL. So I made a dot emv local here. And as you can see this, Drizzle database, where is this coming from? Well, we need to go to Neon database. So let's head over there. Neon database, there we go. And all you need to do after you, this is gonna be super simple. You create a new project, I already have one. And all you need is this connection string. You also wanna make sure you have pull connection on just so you increase the limits of the like, clients that can connect to it. Make sure you reveal this as well. Don't leave the stars, <laughs> otherwise it's not gonna work. But you copy paste that in there and that's that. Cool. So that's set up. Uh, the last thing to see is if we can actually connect to this database. So one last step that you need to do in your package JSON, let's head over here to the top, uh, is to set up a generation and a migration script. And here, essentially what we're doing is we're pointing it to this drizzle config ts okay so if we want to push up any changes or we want to generate the typescript types uh, we have these two commands and the drizzle config essentially just looks like this here we just specify where we want the schema where is the schema and where the migration folder is and the driver here is pg as well for postgres and then you pass in the db credential and that should be it so once you have all that set up, I know it's a little bit, but I don't want this to drag on too much just to set up a database. So we should be able to run DB, npm run DB generate. Hit enter and hope it doesn't crash. That's a good sign, nothing to migrate. Yours might say if it's the first time you're pushing this up, it's gonna say, woo, change is done, cool stuff. Um, let's see, we'll try to push, there we go. So let's have a look here now. If we do push, we should see the table here. And there we go, we have a product table. I already added a bunch of crap here that you're gonna see in just a sec. Um, so yeah, the next step is before we actually do the rate limiting, I wanna actually visualize you know, the, the products and have the ability to create the products. So let's set up that really quick. First off, we need to npm i 
React hook form and Zod as well. So make sure you install these two. So let's create an action. We're gonna add use server to the top, making sure that this code only runs on the server. And then we're gonna import our database. So import db from slash, right? Because it's, we can just do server like that because it's index.ds, yes, so it's automatically gonna pick it up. And this is exported as well from there. So that's great. Okay, so let's create an action here. Export const action. And I'm gonna be actually using another package called next safe action. So npm i next safe action. So let's install that as well. So what does this create safe action do here? Essentially, it allows us to type safe all of our server actions. So what we do is we just define it up here and then we create this product schema. So usually I like to just go here in my root folder and create another one called types. So let's do that types like that. Oh, I already have one. Here we go. I just added a product schema here, which is the Z object and the only required uh, property here is going to be the post, right? If we check the schema, this is going to be automatically generated and this is going to be automatically generated as well. So that's all we need to pass in. But look how cool this is. So we can just go here and import this product schema. And now here, the second parameter is basically just an asynchronous function like you'd have it before. But look, if I hit control space, boom, you can pull out the property that needs to be added. So now here, we can just define a new product and we'll say await db.query. Sorry, this is a uh, create a product. So <laughs> db.insert into the products schema and the values that we need to add, look at that, is the post. And that's it, easy peasy. And then we can return this as well. So we can actually get back the data. And if it's successful, I like to do success and error. What well, what do we have? Let's see. We have our page here that just have this H1. We'll create a component here. So let's create a new component called um, product form.tsx. So for the product form, I'm just going to copy paste the code because it's quite a bit to write out, uh, but I'll guide you through it quickly. So the first step is to create this form from React hook form. And here you can pass down that product schema that we kept using pretty much everywhere, right? In our uh, actions as well and here. So our default values I pass down post as being an empty string and then on submit here allows you to actually get the like uh, what's it called the validated values true. Um, and here we're just using chat cn to essentially render out a form that's a type of post here and then we just have a button really that's like that's all to it to be honest. So using you know that next safe action that we had you can import this hook from it next safe actions hook use action and then you just pass in that create product that we had here right we pass in the create product and the second argument allows you to pull out a bunch of um, callback methods like on error and on success and now with this execute we can just run it when all the data is valid so we can just pass it down in here you can also do it like this so you can see what's going on. So this takes in a post and then we can get it from values.post. But since it's the same, we can just pass down values like that. Cool. Now we cannot see this form. So let's go back to the page here and we'll insert it. So we'll say product form like that. Well, this is going to be really simple. Cons data equals await db query products. How many? All of them. Find many. There we go. And once we find all of them, return success data. There we go. So now we can just get this. And since this is a server component anyway, we can just use it here. Um, again, I'm gonna be going more in, in depth in the next 14 course. I'll show you a preview as well. Sneak peek before the official trailer. <laughs> okay, so we'll do const. So we have the data here, right? And then we can do await, get products. And since you know how we have the Get a product, pull it in, god damn it. Um, here we can just deconstruct it. So I can just pull out error and success if I want to, right? And I can say, hey, well, if success, then, then render this out for me. Cool, and then here we can just do a loopy loop. Success.map over each, what is this, like a product. We'll return a Deveroo. 
make sure you pass in the game the key otherwise react's gonna kill you there you go and then here let's just output product post right save holy crap that's a lot okay so check this out if i type something we'll do woo and hit enter rick flair is disappointed because it hasn't appeared on the screen. So here in Drizzle Studio, let's just get rid of all the products. There we go. Get rid of that, close, and restart this. Oh, no, I don't want two postgreses. Ah! There we go, run dev. Run the dev. Refresh, and now everything should be empty here. Well, that's Next.js caching for you right there. Okay, it's still there. Could you not cache it so hard, Next.js, please? There we go, I did a hard refresh. All right, so we're ready. Let's do some rate limiting. You also want to make sure you don't limit your knowledge. With today's sponsor, Brilliant. Look, I'll be honest with you, the only reason I've ever wanted to learn math and physics in my life is to either create games or to create those complex animations you see online and use squiggly nav link. That's why I keep coming back to Brilliant, because they offer hundreds of courses on computer science, math, neural networks, and even machine learning. And I made a habit every day to complete at least five challenges. The lessons are interactive and fun, so it just feels like you're playing a game. Like, did you know each second the sun releases approximately 3.8 times 10 the power of 26 joules? Yeah, that's crazy. I'm not scared. So join Brilliant using the link below for a 30-day free trial and 20% off the premium subscription. Okay, so the first step is let's close up our terminal here. We're gonna head to Neon, not Neon. We'll need to go to Upstash. Let's head over to Upstash. How to, how to type tutorial, Upstash. There we go. So here, what you can do is just create a new database like that. I already have one. Um, so I, I made one here. This is a Redis database. And once you click on it, you can head over here to JavaScript. And here as well, you're gonna have these two, a URL and a token that you can also reveal by hitting this button here. And essentially I just posted both of them in here. Upstash URL, okay, so that's that long link. And then the token as well. Don't take my token. I'm watching you. If, if someone's using it, I'll delete it. I'll keep my eye on it. If I see a spike, it's going down. Okay, enough with the threats. Let's get into programming, shall we? Okay, so let's close that up. So now that we have those two, we can create a new file here, server. Okay, so we'll call this opstash.ts, like that. And here, all we need to do is essentially just instantiate uh, a new Redis database here for us. Okay, and I'm, I'm passing in the URL, and I'm also passing in the token in here. And that's that. And now we can just head to the server action and implement it already. What I'll do is head to the top here and I'll say rate limit and set that equal to new rate limit. New rate limit. Now it doesn't recognize that, but I think we need a package npm i. It's upstash slash rate limit. Make sure you install that. And then we need another one, which is upstash redis. So make sure you install both of these upstash redis. Okay, install that. And now we can head back here. We should be able to import this rate limit. It doesn't recognize it. Thank you. What does this rate limit need? It needs the database. So we're going to say redis. And the second is going to be the limiter. So here we can say rate limit. And there's quite a couple of uh, methods that you can use on it. One is sliding window. And what you can do is just pass in the amount of tokens that a user can have. So I can say five and also the period. So I can say 120 seconds. All right, so they can only make five requests in 120 seconds. Now this Redis is erroring out. That's because we haven't imported it. So import Redis from upstash here, all right? We're looking for this one that we instantiated. Cool. So now we can head inside our create product here before the try, uh, in the try after, before the new product, I mean. And what we're gonna do is we essentially need to get the IP address. We'll do IP address for now. Uh, you can have a look if you wanna do geolocation or something else, but we'll import headers 
from Next.js. There we go. And with the headers, we can actually pull out the IP. So let's do const IP that is equal to headers dot get. And this is going to be X forward forwarded four. I spelled that correctly. I sure hope so. And then here we'll just set equal to await rate limit. This then we this thing that we instantiated up here dot limit, <laughs> and here we'll just pass in the IP address like that. Check out our remaining. We can check out our limit. We can check out success. All of these different properties. So what I can do here is if success fails. That means that the rate limiting has been activated. So if success, again, you can rename this to something else because we're doing success down here as well. So I can say something like max limit maybe, or nah, limit reached, is that more appropriate? If limit reached, yeah, I like that. If limit has been reached, then nuke, I shouldn't say that word, then don't execute anything. So we'll just say return error. Please wait two minutes before you can post again, silly. What? What don't you like? What's the error? I know what the error is. Why did I put this here? Let's cut that out. It needs to go in there. Cool. Okay. So let's run the server back up npm run dev and see if this works. We still have an error here. Why am I doing? I should have moved both of these in there. Uh, let's go to the end. Oh my God, let me make some space. This is too tight. Okay, so these two should go in here. I don't know why I placed them out there. Okay, this little snooky error here. I got rid of it now. There we go. So let's hit save and test this out again. Let's pop this open. We'll open our, our inspector and let's type ba 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 enter. Ooh, please wait two minutes. So let me just go here and console log these out for you. So right here, and before we check the limit, I'll say console log remaining limit and limit reached just so we can visually see what's going on. Okay, let's expand that. Leave a comment and there we go. Oh crap, I just noticed that this works. This needs to be the opposite because as you can see, we have three remaining out of five, right? But we haven't posted anything because we have to say if the limit has not been reached here. I guess that's a bit funny way of wording that. But if I post now, we should be able to post. There we go. That's a new post that popped up. Let's keep typing. Two left. One left. Say goodbye. That's the last one. And now we should boom. You cannot post anymore. That's awesome. Uh, the only thing left is that this will reach the database, so it might be a bit slow. So what you can do is export this as an edge function, just so it doesn't need to go all the way there. Um, if you try to do it here, it doesn't work. So if you do export config and set that equal to edge, right, it's going to fail. But what you can do is set your page over to an edge function because that's going to inherit it. So here in the page.tsx, just set the export runtime to edge like that and hit save. And now from here again, you can, since you have this error pulled here in the front end in the product form, where is it here, right? This is where you're getting that error from. You can do a toast. You can set a state to have the error message pop up there. So feel free to mess around and do whatever you like. So just to give you a quick preview of what's coming in the next JS course, the big update. Um, let me get rid of this. That's our card there. Uh, here now the user can actually leave a product review, for example. So here, if I just type something in, this would be again a great place to add rate limiting. And this is where we use it because we don't want the user to keep spamming all these different posts. So let's add one. Boom. As you can see, that updates as well. That's really cool. So thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Please drop a like and a subscribe. That means a lot to me and it helps out this channel. Until the next one. I needed that.